Hello there and welcome to another tier list video from myself, Nick, on the Chef United Way. Now, this tier list is one of the most exciting ones I have ever done. It's the best Sheffield United seasons in my lifetime. We'll put it that way, in my lifetime, because we've had many, many good seasons before my time. But really, the big season that I remember was the 97 playoff campaign where David Opkin curled it into the top corner, and it is on this list. The categories are GOAT, Run It Back, Enjoyable, Forgettable, and Still Too Raw. So let's get stuck into the first one, and we might as well talk about that 97 playoff final, because it was against Palace. They did score in the very, very last minute of the game to beat us. I remember it being boiling hot, as most playoff finals usually are in, in, that, time of, uh, in that time of summer. And uh, I don't remember a lot from the game. I remember it being boring, but that might have been just because I were a kid. Uh, but yeah, David Opkin broke Blade's hearts, curled it into the top corner. Simon Tracy, absolutely no chance. Don't know who was trying to close him down at that point, but uh, I'm not friends with them. And and yeah, it still breaks my heart to this day. <clears throat> I've got to go straight into Still Too Raw. I'll be honest, this is talking about seasons and not one game. I don't remember too much about that season. Obviously, to get into the playoffs, we must have been decent. Uh, I remember Jan Arga um, from that season. Other than that, struggling. Obviously, Simon Tracy was the goalkeeper, seeing it sail into the top corner. But um, yeah, just from that one day, it's still too raw for me. I can't remember enough about the season to uh, to really, really have enjoyed the season up to that point. I'm trying to go chronologically here, and I think the next one is the Triple Assault season, which was, until recently, my favourite season of all time, and we ended up with nothing. However, it goes in Run It Back. 2002-2003 was so fun. So fun. The final was obviously a travesty, and the fact that we lost 3-0 to Wolves, just we just didn't turn up on the day. But all that season was just magical. Beating Leeds twice, knocking Leeds out of both cup competitions was a highlight. Beating Wednesday, especially at Bramall Lane, and this is where this photo comes from with Michael Brown and uh, Steve Cabraff, that fantastic volley of brownies. But yeah, we had Jags' goal against Leeds at home. Obviously, that was two goals in the last minute. We just, Michael Tong running down the left wing. He was a joke that season. He was so, so good. So skillful. So good at dribbling past players and getting that ball into the box for Asaba, Kaba, those sorts of players to score goals. Wayne Allison, Pesky Salido. We had such a great team. Obviously, the Forest semi-final as well. Didn't even speak about that. The Forest semi-final, which is my favourite Sheffield United game of all time. It was such a great season, and I'm getting goose pimples just thinking about that season because we we never we were never beaten, never beaten, and um, yeah, other than when we were against uh, Wolves and uh, uh, Arsenal and uh, and Liverpool. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next one in chronological order, and I think it is this one right here, which was the Nigel Clough first season because. David Weir started this season, and we were awful. We literally built the team around Kevin McDonald, and then he jumped ship. The fact that we ended up being a League One side and got to a FA Cup semi-final that season after being bottom of the league, and, and I think David Weir's got one of the worst win percentages as a manager for Sheffield United, and we certainly didn't have one of the worst teams in League One at that point. So Nigel Clough proved it. Obviously, we brought some players in as well. I think uh, Brayford came in that season on loan. Maybe Bob Harris came in on loan as well. I can't. I'm trying to remember the signings. Obviously, we had Connor Cody. Uh, I don't know who brought him in, but we had lots and lots of good players. Jamie Murphy, uh, Ryan Flynn had a really, really good season. Jose Baxter had a good season as well. I could probably name that team that played mostly week in, week out. And when you can name a Sheffield United team from number one to number 11, as, as it used to be, uh, that's that's always a good sign. Good sign for a good season. I'm going to put it in. I'm, I don't know whether to run it back or to... I'm going to put it in, run it back. And the reason why I'm going to put it in, run it back is because if, if Cluffy would have come in two or three games earlier, we possibly would have made it into the playoffs and gone straight up. 
I think we'd have gone up under Cluffy that year. We were so good. Um, it wasn't quite the same the season after, but it was such a good season when Cluffy came in because I think we won like a record amount of games in a row. Um, we were so, so good. I think we either finished eighth or seventh that season. It, it's crazy to think that I'm going to run it back on a season where we finished seventh or eighth. But if you remember this season, we were so, so good. I remember going to most of the away games with my dad, like Rochdale and Oldham, and we would just know that we'd come away four or five nil winners. We knew we were going to score lots of goals and concede not many goals. And uh, for, for a League One team to get to a, an FA Cup semi-final, yes, we lost to a Premier League team in Hull, which is, uh, again, crazy to say after uh, after them being in the Championship for a few years. Um, we did so well to go, well, we went 1-0 up, then we went 2-1 up. We obviously ended up losing 5-3 in the end, which for, for a Blades team to score three goals in a semi-final and at Wembley, yeah, what more could you ask from them? So, uh, yeah, run it back, certainly. Just the fact that I've got a smile on my face while talking about that season just shows that we need to run it back. We do. And I've just realised that we miss missed Kevin Blackwell. Yeah. And you know what? That actually is very, very fitting because this season for me is very forgettable. Oh my God, we've missed we've missed Annie Wilson as well. Yeah, this is certainly not gone in the order that I wanted it. But we move, we move, we carry on. Uh Kevin Blackwell, forgettable, certainly. And yeah, I'm not just talking about Kevin Blackwell. I'm not just talking about that Burnley playoff final where we lost one nil to another pretty good goal from Wade Elliott. We didn't turn up yet again in a playoff final. I don't think we've ever turned up in a playoff final. Huddersfield, rubbish. Burnley, rubbish. Palace, rubbish. We haven't obviously haven't scored, <laughs> which just proves that we 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 haven't turned up. But yeah, that, that whole season was a bit of a weird one. Like we had some really, really good players, and I think those were the ones that kind of took us through that season because we ended up, I think we had a little bit of a, an injury crisis up front and we obviously sold James Beatty uh, and we ended up with Craig Beatty. Jamie Ward was injured, I believe, and came on as a sub and got sent off for two handballs. It was just a weird, weird end to the season. Greg Halford was playing up front and I think that just shows that you've got an injury crisis when you're playing your right back slash right mid slash centre back up front. Yeah, Greg Alford played in a lot of positions and um, yeah, up front probably shouldn't have been one of them, but he scored some goals. He scored in the semi-final as well, so you can't really give him grief because uh, he did his job, but he shouldn't have been up there in the first place. And uh, yeah, the fact that I'm struggling to remember the players from that season pretty much just proves that it was a bit of a forgettable season. And I'm certainly not smiling whilst I'm talking about it, unlike the uh, the Nigel Clough era. Uh, let's bring in Danny Wilson now, because we've completely gone uh, non-chronologically, if that's even a word. It's definitely not. So Danny Wilson, we got relegated from the championship. Danny Wilson was brought in as uh, the man that's going to take us straight back up. Obviously, we, are, we were battling up against um, Charlton, against Wednesday. And uh, we were brilliant that season. We were really, really good until Ched was sent down. So I feel like I want to put it in enjoyable. However, I think it's got to be put in forgettable. I don't think there was enough moments in that season for me to be like, do you know what? That was such an enjoyable season. And especially the fact that Wednesday... No, 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 no. It's going in still too raw. I've just remembered. The fact that Wednesday went up instead of us when we were kind of... I think we were five points in front of them with two games in hand. And Wednesday ended up going up and, and we ended up going into the playoffs and obviously heartbreak in the playoffs as usual. And the fact that uh, a Wednesday legend in Danny Wilson was our manager just didn't really help. I really like Danny Wilson. I think he did well for us. I think he was really unlucky with the Ched thing because we'd have gone straight back up if it wasn't for that. Um, but and I've obviously spoken to him on the channel as well. Blackwell, Danny Wilson, spoken about Greg Alford as well. There's all the uh, all the podcast guests coming up. But um, I think if Ched didn't get sent down, I think this would be in either enjoyable or probably still forgettable. But it's obviously still too raw with Wednesday going up and us not. So let's move on from that and never think about it again. Uh, next, I've got Che Adams here. 
And this was probably one of the biggest moments from that season. It was the second season under Clough. He ended up getting sacked this season or the end of this season. And um, yeah, I was surprised at that. Very, very surprised because I thought that Clough was, well, he was certainly better than the manager that uh, came after him, Nigel uh, Nigel Adkins. Uh, but yeah, this season, I'm going to put it in forgettable. We obviously, for a League One team to again, get to a semi-final against Spurs. And I thought we were value for going through. I really did. They had Harry Kane. They obviously had Christian Eriksen because he scored that incredible free kick. But Che Adams scoring two goals uh, when I don't... I think that those were his first two goals for the Blades. And I remember when he came on saying, why have we brought this kid on? We obviously don't want to win if we're bringing this kid on. And then he goes and scores two goals like that. So uh, fair play, Che. Fair play, you were... uh, yeah, you were brilliant that day and you've had a good career uh, up to now. Uh, but yeah, other than that, it's, it's been a bit of a... Obviously, we had the Southampton game where Bob Harris smashed a free kick at Fraser Forster and uh, Mark McNulty tapped it in. That was a good day. Playing against Sadio Mane and uh, keeping him out was good. And obviously, um, beating them. Southampton were really good at that time. They had, I think they had Pella and they had um, Tadic and players like that. So... Yeah, that it was a it was a good season for for a League One camp. Well, not a league, not a good League One campaign, but a, a good cup run for a League One team. Now let's move on to Warnock's winners, and we finished second place in the 05-06 season. Sheffield United finishing just behind Reading, and Reading had a really really good season that season, and finishing above Leeds, which was obviously nice to see. Uh, it's the first promotion I'd seen in my lifetime, uh, and I'm going to put it in run it back. We had a really, really good season that season. We deserved to go up. We had some very, very good players. Uh, and we just kept adding to that with, like, Adi Akinbae, for instance. He wasn't great. But just the fact that even though we are going so well, to bring someone in like that, it's like we are trying to just improve the team. And obviously, when you do things like when you've got a really, really good base and then you add talent, that's obviously going to be good for us. And and obviously, we we went up. It was a really, really good season. Uh, it was more forgettable than some of the other ones, but maybe just because it was such a long time ago now. But uh, I really did enjoy that season. And the fact that it was my first uh, chance to see the Blades get promoted, it was very, very special for me. Uh, it's not quite go, but it's definitely, definitely run it back. Uh, let's move on to our League One 100-point season. And this... This is where it gets subjective because I think a lot of it is pretty standard up to now, other maybe than the, the Nigel Clough one. Um, I'm going to put it straight and go. I'm going to put that our 100 point League One season was the GOAT. And this is just me. This is just for me because I know that people are going to say the ninth place position should be GOAT. But for me, and enjoying football and watching Sheffield United win games of football and how good we were, the 100-point League One season has to be GOAT for me. And the fact that we went from, well, we went from Nigel Adkins, who was awful and we'd completely lost the club. Chris Wilder came in and just sorted everything out. We went from bottom of the league as well because Chris Wilder didn't start this season very well. To, to 100 point season and again it's another season where I could tell you exactly which player played the most games in the most positions I'm not going to do it now that's for that's for another another video but yeah winning a trophy or winning a legitimate trophy as they say because the shield for for win or coming second in the uh in the championship or the cup that they now have for finishing second fans don't think that's a that's a real trophy. Winning a real trophy and winning a league, I've never seen Sheffield United do that. And, um, yeah, making me feel emotional just thinking about it right now, just winning a trophy and winning something, whether it's League One or the Champions League, it's just fantastic to see. And, um, yeah, it's go. It's definitely go. Anyway, let's move on before I start roaring. Next, we've got two seasons later. Chris Wilder took us to the Premier League. I loved this season. I loved it with all my heart. I don't think it deserves to go in GOAT, though. It's going in Run It Back, but I th- honestly think it's top of Run It Back. It was a bit of a, 
a sad state of affairs that Sharpie towards the end of that season got a few injuries. Obviously, Didsy stepped up and Didsy was incredible. Another team where I can say that I could pick that team week in, week out most weeks. Obviously, we had Stoke away. I went to that one. It was incredible. Well, I went to most of those away games that season. Stoke away was one that I'll never, ever, ever forget. And obviously, it's on the thumbnail of the uh, uh, of the season. Yeah, Ale Ale Ale, obviously that was um, incredible. John Egan coining that term and, and coming up with that song, the the video to that. Like, if that was never recorded, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have this channel name, the Chef United Way. That comes from that, obviously. So uh, yeah, there's lots of things to say about that season that were just incredible. Incredible. Um yeah. Again, feeling emotional talking about it because yeah. It is, it is emotional, What seeing the Blades do well. Next, let's talk about the ninth place finish for Chris Wilder in the Premier League. Obviously, run it back. It's got to be in run it back. It's not quite GOAT for me. I'd actually put this one in GOAT before putting this one in GOAT. And the reason for that is because it was locked down for the last part of that season. We had... One of my favourite ever seasons up to a point. And if that season would have carried on with no lockdown, I'd have probably put that in go. Either go or it's, it's, it's up there. But yeah, we, we had such a good first half of that season. I can't remember when lockdown came, but such a good first half of that season at least. And I enjoyed every game. I really did. Uh, and then obviously locked down and it just wasn't the same. We had a couple of good games like the Wolves home game where John Egan scored that header in the last minute. We obviously beat Chelsea and, and Spurs at home, which is fantastic and would have been even better if we're in the stadium. But I just don't feel like I had that connection with the team and with the club at that point because it was all up in the air, wasn't it? And uh, we didn't know what was going to happen. But the the picture that I've used for the thumbnail as well, Ender Stevens as... Uh, strike where they're all watching i think they're watching the screen in the corner to watch the goal back because it was so good i think that's what they're all looking at and it's 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 such a good photo that it really is but there were so many great moments from that season least we scoring against arsenal Oli mcburney scoring the last minute goal against man united when we played them off the park um or played them off the park for the first half at least uh, Spurs away from home went to that one fantastic game we played them off the park unlucky not to win the game yeah it was such a good season just ruined by lockdown and and it's not it's not the players fault it's not it's not Chris Wilder's fault it's no one's fault it's not the fans fault it, it's just lockdown's fault and finally we've got Hecky's promotion winners and I'm going to pop them in enjoyable I know what you're going to say how have you got a league one season when we won nothing but you put in a championship promotion winning team in enjoyable. The reason for that is, I don't know. I just, it felt like a weird season. We were good, but we were never that good. We were never as good as this team or this team or this team or this team. I don't think that team were as good. I think it was a poorer championship, in my opinion. People are going to disagree with me on that, and that's fine. If we weren't for Illiman, I think we'd have finished sixth, maybe lower. Um, we were good, but we weren't as exciting as seasons gone. And that's the only reason. Nothing to do with Heke. Nothing to do with the fact that I'm, I'm a massive Chris Wilder fan and not a Heke fan. That's not true at all. But yeah, I... It just wasn't as enjoyable for me. It was certainly enjoyable, but I remember Ollie saying to me loads of times, isn't promotion supposed to be more fun than this? And yeah, we scraped through some games. We won some games 1-0 when we weren't playing too well, and that's what a promotion team does. Uh, but like I say, it, it certainly wasn't forgettable. It was just, it was enjoyable, but just not as enjoyable as the rest. Anyway, that's me done. Thank you very much for watching this tier list video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have, reminiscing of these great times. And um, yeah, let us know what you think in the comments. This is massively subjective. I, I don't expect one person to agree with every, every place I've put these seasons. Uh, and that's what's so fun about these tier list videos. Let us know what you think, where you would put these things, where I've gone wrong, where I've wildly gone wrong, and, and where you agree with me. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.